Hello, hello, and good evening to you all. I'm so happy to see you today, as today I have another true crime ASMR video for you. In the background, you may hear always, this video will be added to my true crime ASMR playlist where you can find previous and future videos in this series. I upload pretty frequently, I would say up to twice a week for this series. And if there are audio malfunctions, maybe more. So, there is so much to discover and learn in this series. So, today's case is extremely sad and has a lot of graphic content that does pertain to a child. I know for many, this is triggering as it should be. It is a tender subject. So, you have been advised if this is not something that you can handle, I do have previous videos that you may find relaxing. So, today we will be talking about the case Erica Parsons, a beautiful girl and her wicked adoptive parents, Sandy and Casey Parsons. So let's get into it. Erica Lynn Parsons was born on February 24th. 
and reports of intellectual disabilities. It was likely that Erica also had fatal alcohol spectrum disorder. Sandy and Casey Parsons received federal money to assist with Erica's disabilities. They also received money from the state to care for her due to her status as being adopted. For unknown reasons, Casey, Erica's adoptive mother, would pull her from public school when she was very little. Casey would then register her home as a Christian homeschool. And due to the limited laws in North Carolina that govern homeschool regulations, it was not difficult for Casey to establish a homeschool at her rural home outside of Salisbury. It is very unlikely that Erica was educated at this homeschool and instead was routinely abused starved and neglected up to her disappearance. She was often kept in a closet and fed dog food out of a can. The family would isolate Erica from any family activities. Federal testimony from family members and those who knew the Parsons indicate that Erica was left out of family activities and that her adoptive mother hated her and said she wanted to kill her. Casey Parsons' sister, Robin Ashley, testified in court that Casey could not stand the sight of Erica's face. She refused to let her call her mom and admitted to assaulting her. According to Robin, Erica reminded Casey of Caroline Parsons, which is Erica's biological mother. whom Casey did not like. Casey also told Robin she was afraid she might lose control and kill Erica. And the Parsons' son, Jamie, would would have to testify that he and his biological sister would often join in with their parents while they beat Erica. He also spoke how Casey would often bend Erica's fingers until they broke and then would deny her any medical care. Witnesses told the court that Erica would also be locked in closets and subjected her to multiple birds as punishment. The homeschooling of Erica was an attempt to keep her away from anyone who might have become suspicious of her abusive treatment. On July 30th, Erica's then 19-year-old adoptive brother, Jamie Parsons, would report Erica missing. It was said this was after a fight with his parents, but J. 
Jamie would report that he had not seen his adoptive sister in almost two years. He told police that Erica had been abused and that he believed his parents had killed her. He also believed she was buried in their backyard. He would later retract those statements, although later testifying at his parents' trial. Jamie Parsons would also testify that the last time he had seen Erica was November 19th, 2011, stating Erica was standing in a corner, which was usual punishment for her. He would state that she didn't look good and that she looked like a zombie. Erica had stated to him that she did not feel good and that she could not breathe very well. Jamie states Casey Parsons overhearing Erica telling him this and Casey told Erica to shut the fuck. When Jamie awoke the next morning, his parents had left early, which was unusual, and that Erica was gone. He had asked his parents on her whereabouts, and they simply stated she had gone to live with her biological grandmother. Authorities would investigate, and the Parsons would claim that their adopted daughter was living with her biological grandmother, a woman called Nan. This woman, however, could not be located. The Parsons stated that the grandmother was the mother of Erica's biological father, Billy Dean. Casey would state that she had made multiple phone calls with Erica up until her 14th birthday in 2012. However, phone calls had allegedly went to a disconnected number after that. Again, there was never a Chloe Goodman to have ever been located. It then had been alleged that the Parsons sold off the missing girl to pay off mounting debts. This would quickly be denied by the couple. However, the ongoing investigation did uncover that the family was deeply in debt. Federal agencies would soon get involved since the Parsons admitted that Erica was no longer living with them, which meant that the couple had no legal justification to claim Erica on their federal income taxes, nor did they have any 
legal right to receive financial assistance for a minor child that was no longer in their care. According to the Salisbury Post, Parsons would receive government-funded adoption assistance, Medicaid, Social Security, and food and nutrition service benefits for a dependent that did not live with them and used the mail commit the fraud. Casey Parsons would plead guilty in federal court and receive a 10-year sentence. Sandy Parsons, however, would take his chances at trial. And even though he was convicted of 43 charges, he was only sentenced to eight years in a federal prison. The judge in their sentencing made no secret that he was aware that the Parsons were hiding relevant information as to the whereabouts of Erica Parsons. U.S. District Judge Thomas Schroeder told Casey Parsons, I have sentenced close to a thousand people. I can't think, or he actually told Sandy Parsons, I have sentenced close to a thousand people. I can't think of a case that has troubled me more. Their arrests for fraud took place in 2014 and were placed in prison in 2015. Because Jamie had not called in that his sister was missing till 2013, yet no one had seen this girl since 2011. The judge stated that he believed Casey was the brains behind what happened and said that Erica endured horrific abuse and that the fraud distracted investigators from the other problems. The judge also said there was no evidence Erica was even living Safely behind the prison walls, Sandy began to seriously contemplate coming clean about what happened to Erica. After the Parsons were in prison, the investigation did not relent. After one faithful interview with authorities, Sandy Parsons knew that his time was up. He would then decide to come out with the truth. In 2016, he admitted to the murder and told investigators that he could lead them to where he had placed the body. Erica had been buried outside of Pageland, South Carolina, on a wooded property that belonged to Sandy's mother. He led authorities down a dirt road where he instructed them to stop. He pointed over to a small dirt mound just off the side of the road. This would be the spot where he had buried 
Erica Parsons' body in 2011. Erica's body would be found in that very spot. Parsons were each charged with the new counts, including murder. What the autopsy would reveal, combined with the multiple witnesses, painted a horrific picture. The autopsy concluded that Erica had died due to homicidal violence. There were multiple fractures in her bones at varying degrees of healing when she was murdered. Broken arms, a fractured jaw, A fractured jaw and multiple hairline fractures were in various places on her body. This angers me so much. Anyway. In court, family members testified as to the extent of the severe physical abuse and psychological torture to which Casey and Sandy Parsons subjected Erica to. The Parsons' son, Jamie, testified about his role and his sister's role in the abuse. Multiple eyewitnesses would describe the harsh treatment as well. Photos were brought to court that featured Erica in the background, standing in the corner, on five occasions. Casey's sister, Robin Ashley, stated that she had seen bruises and marks on Erica, and that Casey had relinquished the child to her custody for several months due to Casey stating this would be so she wouldn't kill Erica. Parsons would take Erica back, fearing she would get in trouble for receiving money for a child who was not in her home. Jamie, in his testimony, would go in detail of the day his parents left with Erica and came back home empty-handed. Jamie had seen how they had not returned with Erica and felt something wasn't right. He stated how his mother, Casey, looked normal and went right to her recliner with her computer. However, Sandy looked sick, like he was about to throw up, and that he had only a blank stare. Before the Parsons' arrest in 2014, they had went on the Dr. Phil show in 2013 and had pled their innocence. Although, after a polygraph test, the show only showed more of the darkness that made up their family. During court, many of Casey's fraudulent acts had been exposed. Casey had been revealed 
as a scam artist. Prosecutors presented evidence of a series of scams that had been carried out by her. In 2000, Casey was hired to be a surrogate mother. She became pregnant and took payment of $10,000 for her services. Weeks later, she called the biological mother, Amy Miller, and had stated that she had a miscarriage. Amy Miller would state she believed Casey was still pregnant, as Casey refused to turn over medical records, changed her phone number, and sent Amy nasty emails. Casey then offered to sell the baby to her sister, Robin Ashley. Robin would then search for Miller, for Miller online to tell her Casey was indeed still pregnant and that Casey had taken money from two other couples who wanted to adopt. Miller was fortunately able to take custody of her child at birth. After getting law enforcement involved, evidence was also presented of an eBay scam where Casey accepted money for items listed on eBay never sent the items. Judge Schroeder labeled her a serial swindler. After being charged with multiple counts of abuse in the murder of Erica, prosecutors announced prior to trial that they would be seeking the death penalty. In desperate attempts to save their own lives, both Sandy and Casey offered up plea deals through their attorneys. On February 19th, 2018, a grand jury indicted both Sandy and Casey Parsons on counts of first-degree murder, felony child abuse inflicting serious injury, felony concealment of death, and felony obstructions of justice. Casey Parsons would spend life in prison without the possibility of parole, while Sandy Parsons would be spending up to 53 years behind bars. The courts accepting their plea arrangement, and the couple now serving their time in a North Carolina prison. Casey Parsons pleaded guilty to first-degree murder on August 2nd, 2019, in Rowan County Superior Court. Sandy Parsons pleaded guilty to second-degree murder, child abuse concealment of death, and obstruction on December 17th, 2019.
So that is today's video. I know this video was quite long, but this case, Erica, deserves every detail to be said. Although I do believe Casey was behind, like, the whole thing. I believe she was the mastermind due to the testimony testimonies. But the testimonies of Sandy's actions are just as horrid. I believe even with his help finding Erica, he should be in for life in prison as well. The only problem I have with the death penalty is in situations like this. I believe death would have been too swift. They deserve to be imprisoned just like they did to Erica. I truly hope that their peers in prison make their lives miserable. The lifetime of Erica, that was so, so miserable. On that note, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it relaxing and informative. I will be placing pictures of the beautiful, beautiful, Erica Parsons at the end of this video she would be 27 today thank you so much for stopping by and I hope hope so I hope to see you again soon. And thank you so much for watching.